Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm ready to do my full review on this little slip joint. This is the Artisan Cutlery Biome, and it is designed by Dylan Mallory. It is a Mallory design knife, and uh, this is actually my first of his designs, even though I'm pretty familiar with him and been following him for quite a while, and he seems to be friends with quite a few of my friends. Um, but yeah, I was excited to try out one of his pieces, so I'll link down below to uh, Mallory Designs on Instagram, etc. And uh, I also want to link down below to my buddy Chris, aka Cerberus Knives. Um, he's the one who loaned me this to review, and so I appreciate that. Not only did he loan me this, but he also uh, gave me a set of Shaman Worker Scales, ultimately, that I reviewed, and uh, he also loaned me his prototype, uh, which is also a collaboration with Artisan Knives. So, um, yeah, if you check out the Arion full review, you'll see that knife as well. But this is my first real experience in adulthood, <laughs> giving a proper shot to carrying a slip joint. So I mentioned in my first impressions of this knife that I, I just I haven't before. <laughs> I haven't carried a slip joint regularly since I was a kid. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One would just be preference of like things being that I like to fidget with my knives. Um, another thing is trust in the mechanism and being able to use a knife hard if it comes down to it. I don't trust a slip joint to be able to use it hard because it's non-locking. <laughs> um, I like the idea of my blade locking into place until I unlock it. So uh, there were concerns coming into this and that's why my collection doesn't have a bunch of slip joints in it. It's those concerns are real for me. But I wanted to give it a proper shot and I've carried this knife a whole bunch of times now. I haven't, it's been rare <laughs> that I've carried it as my only secondary. I always have a primary front right pocket. I'm never gonna have a slip joint as a primary. That's just not something I'm going to do. But I've tried it as a secondary a couple of times and then even more than that, I've just had it as like an additional knife on my person. I've been carrying a fanny pack lately to give that a shot. I keep mentioning that and that there will be a video about it soon, so I'm going to talk about that soon in a separate video, but I've tucked this into my fanny pack a whole bunch of times. If I've been wearing a jacket, I've put it into one of the jacket pockets a bunch of times, and I've also just tossed it loosely into like my back right pocket a few times, or into my coin pocket once or twice. It's been in a bunch of different places on me, and uh, being as small and slim and light as it is, it, it's been pretty good at just kind of disappearing. Like I can oftentimes forget that I've even got it on me. Um, so that's a good thing. But let's talk about the materials used here, what it's made of and all that, and then we'll talk about what my experience has been with it, whether I see myself being open to more slip joints moving forward or what we have going on. So first things first, blade steel on this guy is going to be 12C27N as uh, budget knife steels go, I'm, I'm pretty cool with that. I like 12C27N. These are, I think, right around 30 bucks, maybe 35, 40. Um, they're, they're budget slip joints there. They're fairly inexpensive. So that steel for that price, I think is good. This one is the Jade G10, so natural G10. Uh, you can see it's got a little bit of kind of clarity. You can see through it a little bit. And uh, I'm not personally a fan of Jade G10. It's very rare that I like the way Jade G10 looks. So if I was getting one of these, I'd get it in another color for myself personally. Or if it was this one, I would dye the G10. Which, if you're into writ dyeing G10, Jade is an excellent place to start because it hasn't been colored yet. So yeah, we've got Jade G10, 12C27N, and then because it is a slip joint, you can see there's this steel bar that runs along back here. There is an integrated kind of lanyard pin back there if you feel the need to use one. And that's it. Super simple. Just got some pins for construction. I guess they're not pins. They do have Torx heads. So screws for construction, pivot screw, and that's it. Now, I'm not well versed in slip joints, as, as evidenced by everything I've said so far. They're not my forte. So I'm not like probably the right person to compare this to other slip joints. If you're into slip joints, this won't be the review of this knife for you. Um, because I, I really just genuinely don't have anything to compare it against. The only slip joints that I've really had experience carrying 
would be like when I was a kid, I carried Swiss Army knives quite a bit. So those are slip joints, kind of. I mean, they're like multi-tools too, but um, beyond that, I haven't really had many slip joints that I've ever carried or used. So this one does have a half stop. I know that that's a thing that people talk about, and as far as I know, this is a good one. It stops halfway. That's there. And then it has the full stop, if you will. Um, when it's fully open, it does take a good amount of pressure to push it out of the open position. It's not like it's at any risk of just like flopping closed. So in theory, when you're cutting with a blade, you're going to be pushing through material at all times. And so there's not really much chance of a knife folding in like on your hand or anything. The problem for me is I do use a saber grip a lot where I'm applying pressure with my thumb. As you can see, on a slip joint, you don't really want to do that <laughs> um, unless you're confident that you're still pushing through material. Because imagine if I'm like feather sticking or something and I'm using my thumb up here to press, keep that pressure on the blade so I can really push through and then I push all the way through the material. If I've still got that pressure with my thumb, boom, I'm pushing forward and sending the blade down towards my fingers. I don't like the idea of that. So to me, a slip joint is just very limited in the types of things that I would do with it. It's not that I'm feather sticking every day, but I would open boxes with it, but I don't think I'd be comfortable like processing, like when I slice cardboard to get it into smaller sheets to put in the dumpster, I wouldn't want to use this to do it. I've done it a little bit to test, but I was real careful the whole time I did because same thing, once I pass through and get to the end of that material, I need to make sure I'm not applying pressure onto the back of this blade. Otherwise, it's going to bite me. So, that's nothing new if you're familiar with how slip joints work, but that's really where I'm kind of at on them. So, in reality, the way it went carrying this quite a bit, I've had it in my possession now for, gosh, probably about a month. Um, I'm putting it in the mail today to get back to Chris. Uh, it went well in the sense that this thing is so light, so slim, so tiny, I can just chuck it into any pouch or pocket and it's comfortable and convenient and, and easy to have with you. Um, I wouldn't mind like in my suit coat getting one of these in like a, a material that I liked the look of a little bit better and literally just leaving it in there full time so that anytime I put my suit on it's got this in it. Like something like that would make sense to me. But in terms of the actual utility after spending time carrying one, using it a little bit, uh, for the last couple of weeks, I don't feel any desire to like start collecting slip joints and carrying them often. It just doesn't do anything for me. I already don't like backlocks. <laughs> I've been open about that ever since I tried out the Native 5 um, fluted carbon, which was a good enough knife that I kept it for a long time, even though it was a backlock. But this takes like all the negatives of a back lock and then adds that you also, it doesn't lock. So there's still no fidgetiness happening here, which I'm a fidgeter. I like to fidget with my knives. And it just, uh, yeah, it's antiquated. This is a very old way to make a knife. And I get that to some people. That's really charming. And that's a, a I understand that. I don't feel the charm <laughs> with slip joints. It doesn't spark anything in me to have a knife that's made a way that has legitimately been made obsolete. Locking knives are more effective at doing everything I use a knife to do. There's no advantage at any point to not have a lock on a knife for me. So I guess that's going to kind of be what it's going to be. But let's talk about this knife specifically, now that that's kind of the results of my carry challenger out there, that I still don't, I haven't grown an affinity for slip joints. But let's talk about how this knife in particular does and the design of it, etc. So, all things considered, I am very impressed that this knife costs as little as it does, because it feels quite nice to me. Um, the fitment on it is nice. The way that everything lines up is good. The finishing on the G10 is really nice. It's got a little bit of contouring to it, and it's uh, it's almost like a polished G10, but it does have a little bit of grit to it. Um, yeah, it's finished well. I like the shape of the handle, the fact that I've got this kind of gentle curve all over. There's a little bit of a groove up here for your pointer finger, but it's it's nothing that even, like even if I slip back and I go right onto that hump, it's so 
unaggressive <laughs> as handle shaping goes that I can kind of go anywhere on it and it's comfortable. And the fact that it doesn't have a clip on it feels very nice in hand. Um, I prefer pocket clips. You can watch my Benchmade Tangu review to see how it went using a clipless pocket knife for a little bit. Um, but I mean, I think the way I see this knife is aesthetically, it looks nice. It's pleasant to look at. Again, I'd not go for the JG10 personally, but I think it's a clean lines, a nice blade shape that's very usable. It's got a nice precise tip on it. Um, the edge that's on it is nice. I don't remember if Chris said he had sharpened this or not, um, but it's, got, it's wearing a nice edge. The profile is pretty good. It's pretty slicey. It's a nice tall flat grind. Like this blade shape will be pretty usable for as slip joints go. <laughs> um, if I was to cut an apple with this, I think it would go well. The boxes I've opened with it opened right up. Like it's an effective cutting tool for what it is. And so, yeah, I think if I was going to buy myself a slip joint, like I said, one to like keep in my suit coat pocket or something, this would absolutely be an appropriate candidate. There are much more expensive slip joints out there. I'm sure there are also less expensive ones. You can probably get a, a slip joint for, I don't know, 15 bucks or something on Amazon. But this one being from a designer that I, I like the work from and in materials that I think are, are pretty good for what it is and fitting and uh, having the fit and finish that it does, it's nice. It's a, it is a, a good, pleasant knife. And like, it just, for me, <laughs> isn't something that's going to make it in my pocket to go around. The only reason why it's been in my pocket so much has been to force myself to carry it to see how it worked out. Now that that is done, there, I can't imagine a week from now, I'm like, man, I wish I had a slip joint in my pocket. It just won't happen. But do I want other knives that are Mallory designs? Sure, absolutely. And if I had one of these, would I find a way to carry it? Because it's nice and cool and I appreciate knives? Yes. But I'm not going to run out and buy this model for myself. I'm just not. So I guess that's kind of what my full review is going to have to be. So if you're into slip joints, coming from somebody who doesn't know much about them and is not versed in them, I think it's pretty nice. I, I think it's pretty cool. It looks good. But I'm not into slip joints, so I'm not really into the knife. I guess that's the most concise way to put it. Anyways, uh, this has been the Artisan Biome, and uh, I'm glad I got to check it out. I appreciate Chris for loaning it to me. Again, Chris will be linked down below along with Mallory Designs, and uh, yeah, that'll be that. So thanks for checking it out, guys, and uh, see you on the next one.